الحصه الاولى من هذا المؤتمر هنالك باحثين يتحدثون من علم ويستكشفون افاقا جديده عن الاستدامه ويناقشونها معكم بدايه دعونا نرحب بالبروفيسور ريتشارد ديفيس متشكرا So you should be able to hear me. So, uh, welcome everyone to Newcastle University. I am Richard Davis. So I'm a professor, uh, and I work on. Uh, I used to work in the oil and gas industry, and then 20 years ago I became an academic, and I work on climate change. And I'm interested in how to get CO2 out of our energy system and get it out of the atmosphere. And my role here is I am vice president for International or Global. We call it a pro vice chancellor. So I report to the vice chancellor and president, Professor Chris Day. Um, it's fantastic to see a Professor Amal Fazani and the ambassador here. Thank you so much for joining us. And I do actually, uh, Professor Amal Fazani is the cultural attache and representative I have seen most of of any nation around the world. I, I almost feel I know her. Personally, we've met in London, we've met here, and um, I've also visited Saudi Arabia many times. I was there recently in May, uh, talking to many universities in the region about our joint ambi ambitions, and I'm talking also to our own government here about what we can do together to challenge and change, and to do what the ambassadors talk, spoke about, change the way we're thinking, which I think is a very important uh, principle. I will show you some slides. I'm going to talk about UN SDGs, the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And I think I do that by pressing a button. Okay. I hope that works. Okay, so Newcastle University, it's fantastic to have everyone here. Um, we are a fantastic university, and there's something we do particularly well. And we don't try that hard. We do this just naturally, it's part of our DNA, and that's to work on the UN SDGs, on major challenges that we face around the globe. And the reason I know that is that we're ranked number one in the United Kingdom for our work on the UN SDGs. Eighth in the world, according to Time Sire, on working on these things, first in the United Kingdom. And if you're interested in the QS world ranking around sustainability, we're 18th in the world. So here are these um, 17 UN SDGs, 17 goals, thank you, Steve, Stephen, um, 169 targets. And um, what we found is our university uh, and the people in our university want to work according to these UN SDGs. I gave a presentation about this in Berlin, and UC Davis, my equivalent there, came over and said to me, how do you get your staff to take the UN SDGs seriously? And I said, no, no, no. It's the other way around. The staff are taking it seriously and they're telling the leadership to take it seriously. It's very bottom up from our community. So there are 117 targets, 117 uh, goals, and 169 targets in these UN SDGs. And they're really important. And we try wherever possible to think about how our teaching and research can address these goals. Right, so I've already said we're ranked in first in the Times Higher Impact Ranking, which is around the UN SDGs in the United Kingdom. We won't be first forever, someone will take our place, but we'll be up in the top 10. And that's really, really important um, for our university. And our world ranking, you also will be aware, is, is in the top 150 of universities around the world. But this ranking includes hundreds and hundreds of universities around the world, and we're one of the best in working around the UN SDGs. We try and weave the UN SDGs into lots of things that we're doing. So firstly, on the left-hand side, okay, there's a ranking. That's the first thing to say. There's a ranking that assesses that. But also, we uh, are working on net zero, 
Furrow campus. That will cost about 15 million pounds a year. We're going to spend about 100 million pounds. That means all sorts of things. For example, um, underneath some, one of our buildings in engineering, we are fitting a new combined heat and power unit, which will generate heat and electricity burning biofuel. We're putting solar panels on the roofs of many buildings. You may not have noticed, but the temperature has been reduced this winter down to 19 degrees, not 21. Because every time you reduce the temperature of the building by one degree, you save 10% of your energy. So we're trying to reduce demand. So that's the second big column here, thought, act, thought leadership and action. We're joining lots of different groups that work on the UN SDGs, and we are signing up to new uh, compacts and agreements around UN SDGs. And we have initiatives. We have something called the Global Challenges Academy, which is all about changing the world around us as a university. And lastly, research projects. There's a couple just listed there, one on deltas and one on water. These are huge international research projects linked to the UN SDGs. 30 million pounds of funding in just two projects listed there. So I want to give you a couple of examples. This is one of the, uh, sorry, this is one of the examples of the projects we're doing. This is research that we're doing with UC Davis around zero hunger, UN SDG number two. So. UC Davis, McGill, etc. are working on uh, the University Global Coalition SDG2 Zero Hunger Initiative. So we're bringing people together, researchers and students, and trying to work out how we as universities can contribute to this particular objective. And we're trying to introduce our UN SDGs into our teaching. I am leading myself um, initiatives to create new degree programs in things like electromobility. How do we get, how do we electrify transport? Because you can't capture the CO2 coming out of the back of your car. We need to use electrification so that the CO2 can be captured where it's generated at the power plant. So electrification is one example of that. We're looking at new degree courses in climate change and, and other areas which are critical because one of the biggest things we can do as a university, yes, we can do research, but the big multiplier is to train people. Training hundreds, thousands of students who go back into Saudi Arabia uh, or into Singapore, wherever they're going to, and they become the leaders. They become the agents of change so that we can create a more sustainable future. So that's the big multiplier. We train thousands of students. They become the leaders in government, in industry, in universities, and can go on to bring about the sorts of things that we want to do. All right. <laughs> Lastly, you'll perhaps be aware of this. We had a recent visit from Princess Noura University, and I visited this fantastic university. You know where it is probably, near Riyadh. And um, we went to visit, they visited as well. We had a football game with the Princess Nura female uh, futsal team. And they came, we had a fantastic uh, event. But we're also looking at um, bringing uh, a particular project around future female leaders in sports um, and introducing and seeing how we can contribute to uh, encouraging uh, women in sports in Saudi Arabia. So that was a lovely occasion we had. Uh, it's like five-side football, but it's not the same thing, I've been told. We did that just, um, just before, just in December of last year. We're having quite a lot of conversations about the opportunity to set up a joint energy centre for renewables. For example, around hydrogen. How can we use methane or hydrocarbons create hydrogen, which can be uh, used in a very clean way, and then capture the CO2 waste product and put it back underground. If we could do that, it would mean that we can use hydrocarbons in a clean way. And that's really important in the United Kingdom 
and I think in Saudi Arabia towards Vision 2030. So in Teesside, there is already a project where they're planning to bring methane from the North Sea, make hydrogen and other things, and then send the CO2 back offshore and underground to store it permanently. And that is called CCUS, Carbon Capture Utilization and Storage. So that is one of the kinds of projects we would like to set up within a joint centre between Saudi Arabia and the United Kingdom across the four Northeast universities that are backing this project, which would be us, Northumbria, Teesside, and Sunderland. And this is something we're having some active conversations about now, and it actually, it was nice to be through partnerships, academics, working with businesses, working with governments, etc., and working with members of the public to do that. So, it's fantastic to welcome everyone here to Newcastle University to talk about Vision 2030, Saudi Vision 2030, and also talk about the UN SDGs and the role of universities. Um, we have a lot of work to do, and we need to do this work at pace. Okay? And there will be risks, and there will be challenges. And we need to work out what those risks and challenges are. We need to do this work at pace, because we're already witnessing the impact of climate change. This year, last summer, we had the hottest day ever recorded in the United Kingdom. I think it was 42 degrees centigrade. This is unusual. And we're starting to see the spring start earlier and earlier and earlier. And so members of the public, people are actually saying this is something that's actually happening. It's not something that's made up by the media. It is a real, it's a real impact. So we need to create solutions which are pro-business and pro-growth, but also help to solve uh, the problem that we have with the changing climate. So that's the end of my presentation. I hope there's something uh, that uh, people have got from that. And if you have any questions at all, please do. Uh, throw them towards me, and I'll try and answer them. Thank you very much. If we can keep the questions to the end of the session, I think it would be better. So the whole topic would have been discussed, and it would be easier for them to kind of... That's right. Professor Davis, can I ask a request from you? Can the last slide be kept, because that would be my presentation. Okay, yeah. The last one. The last one. Yeah, just go back one.